like that way there. There we go. Oh. Starting with the primitive pop. planet Perlerino. Yep, so Perlerino lets him add a Telements card. And the secret effect as well is that it also gains um, fusion monsters and Telements, gain like 500 attack or something. Yep. So and also, if you conduct a fusion summon, mm -hmm. so, yeah. So while when this card's activated, you can add one teal monster card from or monster or Visa staff or from your deck to your hand. Mm -hmm. And if the teal monster you control or in your graveyard shuffled into the deck or extra deck, uh, you can target one card and destroy it. That's, that's nice. So yep, down comes Cashier of Fenrir. Looking like he added um, the Kashtera Scareclaw to his hand. So this, this deck is a, it's a pretty cool deck. You're combining a lot of uh, different engines. You've got the whole Visa Star Frost lore going on with the, sh uh, with the Telemans and the Kashteras. That's a Rhino Heart. Yeah, normal Summon Rhino Heart. Um, the Special Summon of a Kashtera Telemant. Uh, oh, there you go. There's the other Kashtera Telemant. That'd be why... Ash did not search one off the Fenrir there. He's already had everything he needs to get going. Next, Next up, we have Telemant Sharon effect in hand. It is not a cost to discard. It's all part of the effect there. So the Telemant's cash tier, uh, you can special summon it, and if you do, you banish one cash tier or Telemant's card from your hand. And if it's normal special summon, you can send the top three cards of the player's deck to the graveyard. There we go. Three very choice mills there. From the share. Uh, we can see, is that a dimensional shifter? On Oscar's side? Uh, yes, there is a shifter there. Uh, that'll be why Ash is not going to go too hardy, I feel. has conducted a link summon there. That SP Little Knight, I believe, and a Fenrir, and choosing to pass. I don't think he's got anything left in his hand either, so hopefully this is enough to get him through. So it's an Appaloosa with three, uh, using three materials. And we can see Oscar start his turn with Pros Pot of Prosperity, straight away being able to uh, banish six fairly inconsequential cards. It's going to reveal that's an M pen. Uh, Dreaming Town, another M Pen, Dark Ruler, no more. That could be Andy. Um, there's a Swallows Carry that we're talking about. And the Advent of Adventure. Definitely an adventure indeed. Let's see where his card is going to take and where this duel is going to go. And yep, Dark Ruler, no more. Swallows Carry is a pretty cool card. Um, it's recently been played in this the floor under his deck, attributes one wing beast in the hand or face up and then adds one from the deck to the hand with the same level. So you can use that to, to play around cards like Effect Bailer. Yeah, it's definitely a very cool card, cool card indeed. Um, I, it's something I have imp implemented into my Raid Raptor strategy. So yeah, I'm quite a big fan of it. And it's only a common as well. It's really good. Yep, so we see the Unexplored Winds as well as the Stray Banishing the Dimension Shifter to Tribute Summon uh, the M-Pen using the Appaloosa. And a cool thing to note is that Oscar now also has no cards in his graveyard, so if he has any more Dimension Shifters, they are also now able to be activated. Uh, the Stray will add itself back to the hand from the, from the Banishment, and M-Pen will search likely the Dreaming Town that we had seen off the Pot of Extravagance earlier. And that is what we see. Exactly as we saw. So that Dark Rule or No More will prevent Oscar from dealing damage to his opponent, but that Fenrir is also not able to activate. And there we go. Um, I believe Ash is drawing to one card in hand. The Dreaming Town will let him summon that Stray, but he'll need potentially more follow-up to make uh, use of that Dreaming Town. Going to game two. Ash and 
Yep, there we go. And Ash is open with the pressured planet. This is the one that allows him to search for Cash Terra monsters. So his options are the Telemans Cash Terra or the Fenrir. He goes for the Fenrir, which I mean will also just be able to add the Telemans Cash Terra. We see him special summon it. Activating effect here. That searching for I believe that is a Cash Terra Telemant. Yep. That's a King Sarcophagus. This is a incredibly powerful card. Yeah, this is going to allow Ash to start um, sending unwanted cards in his hand ready to the graveyard, and then for any Horus monster in the graveyard, and then free special summons and free like XYZ materials into like Zombie Vampire and allow him to mill even more cards here. So how many times can he do this? Four times. Four times. Once per name, I believe. So he's firing away. That's a zombie vampire, I believe. Yeah, and if you miss that as well, there's a Telemant Scream as well, so that's going to allow him to mill an additional three cards this turn. Well, we see the Dimension Shifter get sent to the graveyard. So the zombie vampire sends four, and then he can special summon a zombie monster, I believe. Uh, no, he can special summon any monster sent to either player's graveyard. By its effect, incredibly powerful. Special summon one of those monsters of the field. I think he's rubbing salt in the wounds and choosing to take the dimensional shifter. It certainly is a dark monster. Telemant Scream, if a monster is normal special summon, you control a Telemant's monster or Visa Star Frost, you can send the top three cards of your deck to the graveyard. There you go. Was that a Sullic or a Midnoise that he's milled there? Hard to see from that angle. Ah, it's Solik. We're just going to allow him to search for more T-Elements cards. Yep, T-Elements Soliac. Card that was very powerful at the height of T-Elements. Uh, when it's sent to the graveyard, you can add one T-Elements monster from the deck to the hand. And he goes for a Bud Dragon of the Swamp overlay into Bahamut Shark with the Rhino Heart. And this is going to bring out everyone's favorite card. Totally awesome. Awesome card. You can see this is a really cool deck that just has a, a bit of everything in it. And you, you can see why he's had to put four extra deck monsters into his side deck. He just doesn't have the room to play it in his main. Yeah, it's indeed. It's just all gas. And is what that is that? Dark Charmer. Dark Charmer. There's a Shiren discarding. Ah, uh, that's the uh, Hell Shadow. If it's sent to the graveyard for a card effect, you get to mill an additional card for each um, attribute on the field, I believe. Yep, so Hell Shadow Hollow when it's. If it's sent to graveyard by card effect, you can send cards from the top of your deck to the graveyard equal to the number of different original attributes among the monsters on the field. So you've got Earth, you've got Water, you've got Dark. That's a destiny here in Malicious. He's milled two of them, but the potential third in his deck, unless it's in his hand. And there you go. Dimensional Shifter coming back a second time for Ash's bidding. Dimension Shifter is a level 6 Dark Monster, so there is a potential synergy with it and the Destiny Hero Malicious to be able to summon a, a, Lynx, a rank 6 monster. Exactly. There is a Beatrice Lady of the Eternal in his deck. That's awesome, and I think he's just used um, Link Summon Sprite Sprint there and sent a Murali to the graveyard, which is the level 2 T element there. Which is going to prompt the effect to fusion summon into Garura there. Garura and oh, Dimension Shifter. We do see the Beatrice. Look, that Dimension Shifter was was a tactical pick. It wasn't just a, it wasn't just just to pick a random monster. It was a, a level six monster specifically. Mm -hmm. I believe when the Garura sent to the graveyard, it comes with a card draw. Yep, so he gets to send the... Sh is that Shiren? Yep, the Shiren that was returned before to summon the Mud Dragon of the Swamp. 
Send that to the graveyard. Draw a card with the Grua. It can be sent to the graveyard for any reason, and you'll be able to trigger its effect to draw. Right. And is that Kaleido Heart as well in the, the summoned as well? Yeah, well, that's a, that's a full board of six monsters for Ash. And he's firing the Beatrice here as soon as possible, since the Black Goat laughs. Wow, that is a new card that we um, did see earlier in the day. Uh, so again, you, it's graveyard effect, you can banish it and then declare a one monster name and then this or neither player can activate the effects of monsters on the field with that original name. To immediately he's able to turn off a key card of Oscar's strategy, either the Flanderies, Eaglin or Rabina. Right, so part of, uh, part of prosperity we go. Uh, it looks like he's taken a little bit more time to choose what to banish now. Could that allude to him possibly putting the ultimate slayers into his deck? So he's got to make sure he doesn't banish the cards that he needs. I believe it does. Great, and totally awesome negates that and steals it as well. Thank you. Yeah, that, that also gives Ash an opportunity to be able to play that next turn. Great. And then totally awesome's effect in the graveyard is going to choose itself to add as a water monster back to his hand, but being an extra monster, it goes straight back there. <laughs> Oscar's still staring down against the board of five monster, a dark charmer. A Fenrir. Just wants to take another read of Totally Awesome. So we have word from the judge that they're trying to clarify if Toad negates the activation or if he negates the effect. Oh, I can see a change of heart in Oscar's hand. Ooh. It's pretty critical, especially if it's able to target down and resolve on, like, Cash Terra Fenrir. But, whew, second part of Prosperity of the turn. Not how many is he banishing this time, though? Does he, does he banish a full six to try and uh, dig for a power play, or is he going to go with three? Looks. There's a toucan, a lightning storm, an M pen. Duality, Apex Avian, or an Eaglin? Yep, that's what he's, that's what he's picked here. Potentially a uh, Dark Ruler No More has, has merit, so does the Eaglin, the rest. It's a bit harder to make a case of Duality. Was that Duality, was it? Yeah, I mean, the only other solid pick here would be Lightning Storm, but depends on the rest of hand, whether he can, like, sort of chew through things like Cash Terra Fenrir and things, or if you like values, getting rid of that t element scream. Hmm. Definitely have to think about this. He goes for the Eglin, the monster. He's either got some really great interaction in his hand already, or this is desperate times. Yep, and then Ash will use the effect of the Black Goat last to call the Fluanderies an Eglin that was just added to the hand, so Eglin will not be able to activate its effect this turn on the field. Mm -hmm. Change of heart, though, coming down. Takes the Collider heart. And this prompts a Kashtera element in Ash's hand. It is a quick play effect. So he is able to banish one of the element traps and then special summon Kashtera and then mill three cards, send three cards off the top of his deck to the graveyard there.
That's a Sprite Sprint up there, not the Dark Charmer, sorry. Yeah, I believe the Dark Charmer was used to make that sprint there, and that's how he was able to send Merle to his graveyard yep. last turn. True, true. See a number of cards sent to the graveyard, one of them being Shiren. Shiren and Mud Dragon of the Swamp. Fusing back. Making. Got a pine dragus to Pella? So, yeah, Dragon Septalia. And I believe that's an advent of adventure from Oscar's side. Indeed. I see, it looks like a spell card in his hand. He's going to summon Rabina. This is a very good start indeed, especially if it goes undisturbed. Ash doesn't play any points of interaction outside of the one heal and have this, but that doesn't exactly stop your opponent from playing. There's an Eaglin coming down. Yep, which is obviously... Just going to be searching the uh, penguin, impin, emperor penguin. Oh no, well, apex avian. Here we go. He might already have the impin in hand. Ash going to read that apex avian. Tribute both. No, he says, no, you can keep reading. I'm just going to keep playing." And here comes the Fluandere's impin. Yep. So you'll be able to trigger one of the Fluandere's monsters that just got banished, as well as the impin on the field to add. Oscar now, I think the best chain links here. Empen one, Rabina two, Rabina heading back to hand there. And one thing to know, Empen's on the field effect as well. That's going to be a, a bit of an issue for the T element strategy, as we've seen earlier today. Indeed, he's going to have to try and out it by putting his monsters into defense mode there, which means he's not able to attack with them, unfortunately. We see the Dreaming Town get added. Here comes Brot of Prosperity. Yep. It's vanishing six. One. Now that he's going first, I think it's a good bet that hit the ultimate slayers aren't in his deck currently. Yeah, he's free to just get rid of anything now. Let me see. It's an advent, an unexplored winds, dimension shifter, duality, the swallows cowrie, and another duality. What a very powerful picks there. Uh, he goes for duality, doesn't go for the dimension shifter. Uh, it's because the prosperity will end up going to the graveyard. Oh, that is correct. <laughs> and, he has no streak. Yes. Right, yeah, that was a yeah. easy oversight. And then duality there. That's a map, Swallows Cowrie. And a toucan? Yeah, that's a toucan. And it goes for the map as well, so that's going to make put even more pressure on Ash when going to his turn. Got to think very carefully about what he chooses to normal summon, if at all. Yeah, because uh, with the right cards, Oscar will be able to summon another monster such as uh, Rise of the Mega Monarch or the Apex Avian he searched earlier. So he's going to reveal, is that the street? Is that a street? Vanishing Toucan, normal summon street. So we've seen this, the Toucan adds itself, the Street Banisher, the, the Prosperity Toucan summons itself. Eaglin adds itself. Yeah, they contribute some of those two for the Apex Avian there. So now, uh, M-Pen will stop 
uh, Special Summon monsters in attack position. Apex Avian can return itself to start one spell trap or monster effect. And then there's also that Dream Encounter for an additional normal summon. As well as the additional normal summon he will gain off the map as well should Ash choose to normal summon. Yep. A fair number of spells in Ash's hand. He's going to read the map. So map says, if your opponent normal summons monster immediately after this effect resolves, you can normal summon one Fluandre's monster. And we know he has a few in his hand. Mm -hmm. He's got the Eagle and he's got the Rabina. And if he activates it's that Apex Avian early on, he is able to summon it out yet again for yet another negate. It's a terraforming. Beating, adds the... Pearl of Rhino. Activate, while well, he's got a stick in his hand, is he going to be allowed to search for a T-Element? <laughs> he is indeed. Oscar choosing very carefully when to do this. The T-Element's Rhino Hop? Uh, I think that's Cash Terra. So, so, so Cash Terra T-Element. Yeah. So two more spells in Ash's hand. That's a... That's a Foolish Burial Goods, is it? They able to send a spell trap. Sends a... Soliac. Soliac. Soliac is going to allow him to search. It's a Shiren. Mm-hmm. The... Trying to put his... Finding as many ways as possible to put monsters on the field without normal summon here. Just 16 minutes on the clock. Sending two. Is that with Imseti? Yep. So, yeah, so from City, Glory of Horus there. Um, if it's in his hand, he's able to discard it and another card in his hand to search for a copy of King Sarcophagus and then draw a card. So then that King Sarcophagus, he's able to place on the field and bring M City, Glory of Horus back to the field. M City also has 3,000 attack points. That's a whole lot of attack points for pushing damage, especially um, when you want to close out a game. And, and these summoned themselves back with no cost attached to them. Right. And Ash draws a card to complete the effect of Imseti. See, Oscar's being very conservative with his Apex Avian here. So Ash has proactively banished the Black Goat Laughs to call Apex Avian. Um, and Oscar is forced to activate that Apex Avian to negate that. Otherwise, he won't be able to use it later or subsequently if he gets to normal summon that again. So that, that was a forced out play. And here he goes, activating the King Sarcophagus here. It is funny to mention, isn't it, that it's the year 2024 and we're still seeing Telemans versus Fluandres here on the stream. It definitely is. It is um, something that we've probably seen a number of times over the last few years. Telemans constantly getting new cards added to. I mean, th these uh, Horus cards are, are fairly new. They have been in the last year or just over. Yeah, at le least in the last couple of sets. But they, have, they fit in so nicely with what Telemans is actually trying to achieve here. Ash just double, triple checking that M pen, making sure it's got no other uh, hidden effects that aren't um, commonly seen. Uh, like we've mentioned before, some one that doesn't come up that often is that battle phase effect where you manage guard from your hand and that opponent's monster 
his attack and defense is halved, so that instead he isn't actually able to attack over that imp in. But Ash declares an attack, then declares the effect of King Sarcophagus. Yep. So the King Sarcophagus, once per turn, it started damage to a horse monster battles an opponent's monster. You can send that opponent monster to the graveyard. So there goes Empen. Doesn't have to be special summon, doesn't have to be anything. It's just attack, send it to the graveyard. See, this is what we've been talking about, how you want to be on top of all your opponent's effects. Like that part of King Sarcophagus' effect might not come up all that often. And Ash was able to use it to just get rid of that Empen fairly easily. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Oscar... Felt that his MPM was going to be pretty safe that turn. Maybe he thought that Ash had forgotten about the uh, attack modification effect of MPM, but nope. It seems that Ash was one play ahead with the effect of King Sarcophagus. But Ash has been able to clear that MPM uh, without using his normal summon as well. So, yeah, I believe we're in main phase two now. He's used the effect of King Sarcophagus skin, send Happy to the graveyard, and then Happy special summon itself out. And I believe that Meta Noise added the scream. Sorry, not Meta Noise. Yep. Um, there was another um, Kilimant Triv Trivicon. Uh, Suliak. Yeah. Ah, Trivi Karma. There you go. That's the one. You banish it from the graveyard and add one spell or trap that mentions Beast of Star Frost on the deck. As he added the scream. True. Oh. Still in the main phase, was able to use the Dreaming Town. He's going to be able to start normal summoning. Yep, so he used the three and the two can. And now he's going to use the effect of the Dreaming Town as well. To banish and turn the two Horus monsters into face down defense position. Yep, and Mpen's also going to be able to search. So adds the unexplored wins. This is a card we've seen very powerfully, not only this match, but early in the day, which lets you uh, send your opponent's monsters great or send your opponent's cards to the graveyard to perform your tribute summons. Mm, it's, it's really it's a fully explored line of play that we've seen today. And then so now we see an Eglin come out and that added another M pen. And which resolves so he's able to normal summon a winged beast and here he comes with Rabina. And we do know his hand, so we know his hand currently has another M pen, has an Apex Avian. Um, so he's going to be able to perform another normal summon of either of those. Yep, just checking that Ravina can add a copy of itself. And there we go with the Tribute Summon. Let's put him down. Thinks about oh, it. Who's considering Apex Avian? Uh, he's tossing up between the two. He goes with the double M pen. Now he's going to be able to add one of the Flawandere's monsters from the banishment to his hand, as well as such. I believe that's an Eglin and an Advent of Adventure. We are now on the 10 minute mark as well. So that plus 500 life points could mean all the difference here for Oscar. Yep, that advent of adventure being able to increase 500. Um, we did mention earlier that Ash did have a volcanic scatter shot in his uh, side deck, so we'll see later if this comes up. Looks like Oscar is completely done with his normal summoning. Okay, so... Must mean he's only running the one copy of Dreaming Town and just relying 
mainly on the magnificent map to allow him to get an additional normal summon on Ash's turn. She's banishing uh, one of the two elements traps there. The which, Soliac. Yep, which is going to trigger the two element Ash Jarrett to mill three cards and then the Scream as well. So for a total of six. Ooh. Mm. I believe that's, that's a Rhino Heart that's getting sent. I see another Scream as well. And is that another Horus Monster on oh, top? Looks like an Super Polymerization. A right salt. Really as well. Ooh. So when Soliac is banished, you can add one Telemans monster from his deck to his hand. But first we'll resolve. So Rhino comes out. Discarding a Shiren. Is that Merlin and Inseti? And that should be making a Mud Dragon here. There you go. And then Pearl of Rhino's effect will activate allowing him to destroy a, a card on the field. Very nice indeed. Where do you go to from here? Still have another M pin to deal with. And it's also main phase two as well. Are we, st are we still on Oscar's main phase two here? Yep, there we go. We see the Bahama. Yeah, because he attacked earlier with the um, Inseti into the first M pen. We've had two more M pens come up since then. It's, a it's totally awesome. That's a toad in attack position. A tactical toad in attack position. So, I believe that toad will not be able to activate its effect while Mpen is on the field because toad is a special summon monster. And it is currently in attack position. Uh, here comes Kaleido uh, Heart. But Kaleido Heart will summon and get rid of um, the other end pen. So now the Toad will be able to use its effect. Now it is looking a little challenging for Oscar. He is staring down against, uh, against six monsters on the side of Ash's field. And a Ash's um, two set monsters aren't small either. With him steady having 3,000 attack and 2,000 defense. Yes, and I believe Happy as well has 2,400 attack and 1,600 defense. So, yeah, must be pretty happy with that field. But we do, look, there is under six minutes on, on the clock, so he'll need to be able to push. Like, it, it's his main phase two. He will need to uh, pick up the pace a bit if he wants to be able to go back to his turn and enter the battle phase at some point. That's the magnificent map here. Is this where we're going to see him... Activate the sprint. Can make sprint with the SP little nut. He's considering it. There's the Bahamut Shark and the SP. Thinking about his plays. Keeps touching his cards. But nope. Just so let's push on with that. Did we, did we see the ultimate slayer? Is that an ultimate slayer drawn? That certainly is a spell. It certainly is indeed. So, yeah, I think it is an ultimate slayer in Oscar's hand there that can deal with... So we know there's a few birds. There's, an un there's the um, advent, there is an unexplored winds. And he's going to start with the unexplored winds. Very good place to start. Early pressure on already, and yeah, this has already prompted the two elements Cash Terra from Ash. Vanishing a scream. Get the mills. One. That's a two element. Two. That, is that a malicious? That's a malicious, and I think it's a forbidden droplet. But that is all that he needs if he did want to get rid of that. Uh, 
get rid of, get rid of the wins there because he has sent. Yeah, he needs to return. Okay, is he able to fusion summon? He summons a stray. Stream? Oh, okay. He's going to be able to use the effect of. Oh, he's going to SP. He's, he's on the effect of um, Stray. He's going to use the effect of SP to banish them both. Very good play indeed. There you go. Good luck. Yeah, so Stray will resolve banishing the M pen that's in the graveyard, and Toucan will add itself. Toucan will then normal summon. Three minutes down to the wire. We, I'm fairly positive he has that advent of adventure in his hand, right? Hey, no, he's passed. Oh no! Oh no! Oh, oh milling three cards now. I think that's for the scream that might be sitting in the in that glary spot there. Yep. So now we'll see a tribute summon. Tributing the M pen. Yep, the planet and the stree for the Impen. Yep, now he's going to be able to... Well, if he didn't have an advent before, he's definitely going to have it now, but he's going to add the field spell, so that, that, would, that would strongly suggest he already has the advent. Yep, I think he's really just like trying to play his cards as much as he can, making that plus 500 life points count for everything in this match. He's going to summon Rubina. Rubina will activate its effect to add another level 4 or lower. going to use additional normal summon Eaglin. Eaglin will be able to search for one more monster. Mm -hmm. Let's perform a tribute summon. Tribute summons a Kaleido. You tribute by sending the Kaleido heart to summon another M pen. Yep, there we go. Yep, it's going to add... And as we said, if he didn't have Advent before, he most certainly going to have it now. He's going to tribute someone into an Apex Avian. So now we see a lot of cards being exchanged on either side. There we go. We see the Advent of Adventure. Plus 500 life points and possibly the game-winning play here. Yep, so you banish one Winged Beast monster from your hand or face-off field and add one Fluandere's monster or field spell. And then you gain 500 life point. Yep. Entering the battle phase, he will attack with M Pen into the Telemann's Cash Tira. He's going to use the effect to be able to banish card from his hand to halve the attack of Telemann's Cash Tira. That puts some damage on the field. Yeah, it puts an even bigger deficit in their life points there for Ash. And I believe I. I believe he had to do that as well because there was the stream that resolved earlier, so that MPM would be minus 500 tactics. Apex Avian will attack into the defense position behind Shark, fairly inconsequential attack. MPEN will attack into the Happy, which will only has 1600 defense, so that will be destroyed. Mm -hmm. um, Oscar in his main phase two will activate the Magnificent Map, set one, and pass the turn. His opponent draws, at that is time on the clock. Time on the clock there, waiting for the judge to call it there. Ash does have the ability to finish the phase. So time is called in the draw phase, and that is a win for Oscar, the floor under.